anyway, so listen, I'm fortunate I couldn't make the show at a uh, Bowery Ballroom. What was that last week? But from what I could see uh, online, it seemed like it lived up to the expectations of a place to bury strangers show. So was that the the first show back? It was. Yeah, I was. Uh, uh, you know, sup- I didn't know how it was going to go. You never know. You, you know, it'd been such a long time, and uh, but yeah, it was all good. Thank goodness it went off yeah. without a hitch. Sometimes, you know, things turn south and you desperately try to bring them back and it doesn't happen, but that one was A-OK. Nice. And did you guys, I look like I looked at the set list online. It looks like you guys played some new material too. Yeah, we did, you know, trying to, you got yourself entertained and for, I think that's kind of the thrill and exciting and, yeah yeah did it feel like it was resonating with the audience being kind of on the newer side totally yeah i definitely had a a bunch of people who you know said all sorts of stuff like was that some cover you played third (laughs) or uh or like man i love your new industrial direction and stuff so i heard all of those kind of comments it was uh it's it's a good thing nice yeah that's one of those they picked up on it yeah. That's one of those things where it's like when you see a band play new material, sometimes you're just like, as a fan, you're like, I don't have time for this shit. But it's <laughs> it's always good when like the new EP does actually kick ass and you're like, this is awesome. It's like new canonical material that they can pull from. So I'm glad to hear that yeah. it was resonating. Yeah, I have those same thoughts too, like at shows, you know, when we were kind of planning on what we were going to sort of do for this show. There was moments when I was like, maybe we should play all songs that nobody's ever heard before. And then it's like, you don't want to go see a band and go see stuff that you've never heard before. So we kind of mixed it up. Gotcha. Yeah. And I can imagine that like, there must be like some catharsis and just being a musician playing a live show again. But like, did you feel that there was also a dimension to that? you know, feeling that was kind of unique to your relationship being a New Yorker for so many years and kind of the city's reemergence out of this like last 18 months or so? Definitely. I mean, all of that kind of stuff sort of, you know, builds up and there's such like weirdness. You don't know what's going to be going on or happening. And, you know, you can kind of, you know, when you start to see all those sort of like familiar faces and all that stuff, you're kind of right there. And, um, I don't know, sort of reemerging with everyone in some sort of way. So it was cool to be able to kind of do that. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I, I'm a native New Yorker, but I had only moved to the city in 2016. So like a lot of the kind of DIY venues like death by audio are kind of more like urban legends to me. So just even in the last year, seeing all the venues kind of shudder, I'm wondering like, do you think now is a time where like DIY DIY venues can kind of like flourish again, or is it really just like those that were able to, you know, hang on through the last year and a half are the ones and it'll take a little bit longer for that kind of stuff to come back. Um, I mean, I see it like slowly sort of coming back, but it can always turn any which way, you know, even at that time uh, years ago when there was kind of stuff more going on, it would kind of go in waves. Mm -hmm. And so I think that um, I hope things are coming back. People have been doing a lot of shows like for free places, like out in the park, you know, on the bridge, underneath the bridge, um, out at like some of these amphitheaters and in Central Park and stuff where they sort of can. And that's sort of, you know, one of the big things about those DIY venues is a lot of times it's by someone who's willing to put it all on the line and risk some illegal show. Yeah. And so uh, it, it's, you know, a little bit more scary when your rent is like $5,000 or something. So yeah, uh, hopefully there's some rich, uh, stupid kids out there who are willing to <laughs> risk it all for uh, <laughs> the awesome art. Yeah, uh, I, it's, it's weird that that's like kind of the dynamic that, um, kind of exists now where I think more than ever New York's kind of like that balance between like it being a financial mega center of the the globe and that impacting like everything else uh, within the city is I think even more pronounced. 
Totally. Yeah. I yeah. think that there's always, cause there's so many people and so much kind of desire for this stuff to happen. It just crops up and happens. You know, there's always like, uh, there can't be too much kind of like police presence in these things. So people would just sort of get the idea they can do whatever the hell they want to do. And mm -hmm. that usually turns into, I want to throw a party and you know, then there you go. Yeah. So I, I know one of the, uh, the questions that you get asked a lot is that chicken or the egg question. Like, is it the, the death by audio pedal that comes first and then informs the band sound? Or is it like a conceptual sound you have in mind that informs the pedal design? Um, so I'm wondering maybe to make it a little more interesting, is there like a specific example of that happening on the hologram EP that you could point to? Totally. Yeah. I mean, uh, one of the things that I was kind of like stuck in, in uh, uh, at my apartment a lot. And so I didn't have enough kind of like electronics to sort of build a lot of things. But um, I did have like a computer that I could write all this computer program code. Mm -hmm. And so I just really explored that a lot and kind of developed this sort of it's like this bending super insane chorus like feedbacking sound where it's like reactive to everything that you play and um i don't know it just sounds like totally nuts and kind of like yeah. i always was you know back in the day i would always play like link up like five chorus pedals or something crazy and so I, eventually at some point you just abandon that idea because you you never can quite achieve that goal of that kind of sound that you're thinking like the ultimate like messed up morphine guitar sound and this uh does that and so that's like you know all over like that song in my hive mm -hmm. and um uh a little bit on like end of the night and stuff and was just sort of um I didn't even know that this was going to be one of those effects that I was going to sort of come up with but in that experimentation you know I sort of it was one of the things that I kind of leaned towards and sort of made happen. And, and then it kind of even wrote some of those songs in some ways. So wow, that definitely yeah. happened. Yeah. I, I, and I will have to also applaud the, the bass tone on, um, uh, what is it? It's uh, playing the part, the outro oh, specifically cool. too. Real, awesome. real good tone there. Yeah. Cool, man. Thanks so much. Heck yeah. Yeah, yeah, some of those things like um, like the baseline to play in the part that's um, uh, like I, I'm pretty sure that song it was like written with the the baseline, you know. So that's mm -hmm. like the the first take, like the excitement, all the like yeah. weirdness and the, the quirkiness of of you're just trying to like uh, you know find some tone or something that excites you to write a song and and there it was and. That was it. And it probably was this bass right back here. Yeah. Nice. Ooh, that old that trashy there. bass. <laughs> it was a Hagstrom eight string bass with four of the strings off of it. So it's just a regular four string bass. Gotcha. Very cool. <laughs> yeah, Whatever. man. It's the gear world is its own thing because like I've only recently started to dip my toes into it in the last like few years. Um and then next thing you know, you're like, oh, this is just going to be a very expensive hobby if I'm not careful. It's so easily. Yeah. I mean, you know, if you want like the secret answer, you don't need all this junk, you know, all this gear. Um, yeah, I don't yeah. know if that's probably <laughs> not the way to promote anything, but, um, uh, but it's, yeah, I'm so surprised that there's like such a world out there. And like, I really kind of blew me away years ago. Um, when I found out that like people are making these kind of like pedal demos and stuff on YouTube. And then there's people who are like watching these things. Yeah. You know, no, but, but not, not just like, Oh, I want to hear like, what does that pedal do or something? But like, you know, just someone kind of noodling around with some pedals, you know, that's like this crazy whole thing. I mean, and they're not even like playing songs or anything. I don't know. It just kind of blew my mind. I was like, oh, weird. Like, I'm just such a song guy, you know, mm -hmm. like I want to hear some band play some cool new song or some sort of thing or, you know, would want to hear a demo for the sake of that. But there's also like this whole other world of just the interest of 
different tones purely for these different tones and yeah and i thought that's pretty cool and weird it, it's hey. it's it's cool but like there's also that inherent fallacy to it where you're like oh i'm gonna listen to what this tube amp sounds like out of my smartphone <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly yeah totally yeah yeah yeah, that used to happen to me all the time when there was like uh, that um, uh, website, mp3.com. Mm -hmm. And it was like, that was like kind of a big platform to find out about a lot of music. And and I would sort of be like booking shows based on bands that I'd like talk to through that mp3.com. And many times would I get to see this band that I just freaking love their songs to find out that they didn't sound like that but it was just this like really trashy terribly like you know encoded mp3 that made this like really pristine pop band sound like totally trashed out and oh, really? gnarly but but yeah they weren't like that in real life <laughs> damn that's yeah. unfortunate yeah well um i guess to help tie a, a bow around this speaking of speaking of bands you have some pretty phenomenal ones uh opening for you on this tour you have coming up it looks like you have glove tv priest that's really exciting um yeah. future islands uh i know you're headed out to like estonia a week from now before you come back yes. to the u.s right <laughs> yeah 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 we'll see how that goes um uh they also wrote me into like giving a conference. So okay. we'll see, we'll see what that entails. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> so they get you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh, I, I'm psyched, you know, just to kind of um, see some people from some other places and hopefully bring some of the New York trash over there. Very nice. Yeah. All right. Well, I think folks can can find all, all the info online but it's uh february and march are the bulk of your u.s and eu dates right yeah. but there's a quick leg in october yeah come on out let's hang yeah go get your ear trumps blown out <laughs> yeah, exactly. cool all right oliver i really awesome. appreciate you uh taking the thanks time so much today. bob um, cool man you too man good talk buddy have a good one